this little quick video about the Woe Pet pet feeder I modified. So I got this pet feeder uh, to feed my little dog uh, automatically on a schedule. Uh, it's from Amazon. I think it's uh, $70. It comes with a controller, mic, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, speaker. You can record audio to play when it dispenses food. It runs off an Android app that doesn't that blue, it communicates directly with the device via Bluetooth. And the device as it comes can be configured to connect to Wi-Fi or it actually requires connection to Wi-Fi. And you can configure a schedule to feed specific portions of food at specific times and play audio or not play audio. It keeps a history of all feedings. It's a fairly, it's a decent app. It's not great. I'm not satisfied with it, so I modified it. Oh, I didn't modify the app, I modified the Wopet. And I eventually probably get to an app, if not just leave the web interface or API calls available. So what I did is I took a Node MCU, because uh, it's got you know the 8266, the ESP8266 Wi-Fi just on board. It's, it's ready to go, it's a great package. So I used it. Um, this is an amazing platform. I think it's really well engineered. Um, it's got this large basin for the the pet food to stay. It's, it's a cone that you know uses gravity to feed these little uh, sections where the where the food is dispensed out the front, and basically the a motor turns and moves food into little. Uh, segments where or areas in there that I'll move it right now just to get a visual of what it does as it's functioning. So that's one portion as I kind of configured it. So this they advertise this as a non-clog and it does a great job of avoiding clogs and jamming. And I think it's a great design. So I wasn't satisfied with the app and control it gave you. So what I did was I, uh, I took it apart. Um, I'm gonna open this up in a second here. Um, and tried to understand how it was working and built, um, built this board to interface with the different components. So let me take this off, there it is. So, this whole thing comes off. It's very, very friendly for disassembly and hacking. These are Phillips head screws. They're all on the bottom. There were no uh, warranty markers, like voiding the warranty or whatnot. It was just like it's a platform to be modified. It's so well engineered. I think this is this isn't the stock optical sensor, but that's that's what it does. Is it works off this gearing system where there are paddles and spaces. So the, the sensor detects when there's when it's blocked or when it's open, and that's a way to to, to count the number of rotations or partial rotations in order to dispense. So all there are are wires to control. So this is just going straight to the motor. This is um, a power cable. So there's a USB port on this. That's all it is. And this other wire are three a three pair of wire. Uh, I use shielded just because I was afraid of this motor interference uh, affecting the readings, but this isn't the stock sensor, although uh, the stock sensor, let me see. Um, yeah, I don't have the stock, sens oh, stock sensor in front of me. It's the same sensor, it's just that they used, uh... yeah, I do have it, good. Sorry about all this dark screen, but I didn't want to show my house. So this is the sensor that came with. It works great. I just preferred to um, use one I had. It was a three wire sensor and I just broke apart this mounting in order to sort of use, <laughs> just to use a bunch of hot glue to fix it on there. It's, it's not the most well engineered design. If I were to try to make this into a platform like more solid. I'd probably just remove this base 
and make my own 3D printed adapter to mount this. But you know, this for prototyping purposes, I used hot glue. The only other component in here is a button I added to interface physically with it because the original had three buttons that I'm not using anymore because that controller board isn't there anymore. So just a way to manually interface with it if I don't have a computer in front of me or hand, uh, my phone in order to get to the web interface that I'll talk about in a moment. So what this is, is of course a Node MCU. It has the uh, ESP8266. There, as far as what components on the board, is, I think it's just a diode. One diode on uh, the power in that prevents power to draw from the board power if I have this connected to a computer. So the motor driver is pulling directly from an external power and doesn't try to pull out the USB power. That's, that's really the only trickery going on here. The rest of it are just direct connections. Because I decided to, instead of trying to build my own motor driver on here using transistors and line level converters and caps and, and resistors, I, I just got this DC motor uh, controller for Arduino, four wire, beautiful circuitry on it, works perfect. That directly connects to the motor uh, this wiring that here, um, and I made a you know kind of janky indicator of which side is which. It's a three-wire connection for the sensor, so the sensor is going through this black cable. Three wires, one wire is uh, analog signal to, to give you a number between 1,024 and zero. So zero is when it's closed. And when it's open in the gap, it's 1,024. And of course, as it moves out of closed to open position, that number is uh, doesn't immediately flip to zero. It's kind of a scale. But it, of course, it jumps to zero as soon as it's open. So it doesn't maintain a place between states very, very um, for very long. And uh, the great thing about the three-wire version, with it has some circuitry on it, I believe has you know it has an LED to indicate when it's open or closed. Um, it has other things in there to help you clean up the signal. I was getting just amazingly better readings immediately um, after I switched off of the stock sensor here. The stock sensor was great. I just didn't want to have to build the circuitry in order to make this work cleanly. So I got this sensor. Um, I think I had this one, um, and I bought this motor driver off Amazon. Uh, I think I'll, I'll put all the links. All the links are on my GitHub where I have the code for this, but let me continue a little bit. Oops, I stuck. What I did was I wrote a little Arduino program and in order to detect when there's a gap and when there's not and advance the motor one, one time anytime I uh, call an advance function, basically. So... I think at this point it's for three. Um, by that I mean one portion is three revolutions. That's what I determined personally. I wanted to feed my dog three revolutions worth of food for every one portion. So when I configure a portion, it's going to turn three times. So just one. I think it was already one, so two. And this will be the third. So. Basically, that's how it dispenses food. It detects how many, it counts how many times it's turned, and I configure it to turn a specific number of times. So I've configured it for one at this point. Um, and this is, I think, some Node MCU libraries that build an asynchronous. Um, I wouldn't call it a web server, but it kind of is. You know, it serves HTTP, HTTP requests. So this is on my Wi-Fi network. I built it a Wi-Fi uh, a web page. I'm gonna. You can set how many portions to feed. So if I set this to say four, I set it. Now it says four. I actually have to power cycle because uh, I didn't write the code very well. Um, so let's power cycle this guy, just removing this. 
let me get back in. So what it does is it writes to, I'm sorry, I'm zooming in the camera just so I can plug this in with one hand. Um, it writes to node, it's using SPIFFS, SI, SPIFFS, file system library. So it stores a text file and that text file holds the value for the position and it's persistent storage so you can configure it and this is my first version of the program it's going to have parameters and ways to configure it for various things I want to build in a real-time clock so I can do scheduling I want to build in a Maybe an interface like a display to front on the front panel, like an OLED or an LCD to display information. I also have a DAC for a digital, uh, digital analog converter for audio, or I2S. That is, it's, on, it's on my workbench that I haven't got working, but of course I want to have some similar mic plus speaker functionality. Likely I won't do recording directly on the device because it seems a little much for me, but I will likely just have a way to load audio files that you can then play over it when it's feeding time. So back into the code. Um, the code is just Arduino running on the Node MCU and it's a web server. So I've configured it to be four portions. Now let's see how many uh, it rotates now. Should be 12-ish. Um, you know, it's not the most accurate code. If people look at it on the GitHub, they're gonna probably notice that it's really ghetto. So what this is doing is it's counting to 12. You know, I configured it to four portions and each portion be three revolutions or three movements. Therefore, it's, it's gonna dispense 12, um, sorry, dispense four portions or 12 revolutions. So the web interface is just a couple buttons. Uh, I put a stop button in case uh, I had made an error in the code and the motor just continues to run instead of powering off this stop being an asynchronous call will update a variable in the code that is intended to control whether it's running or not and basically it just turns it off. So it's a way to interrupt it if it gets a kind of runaway state. And yeah, so that's all that does at this point is starting it up and turning it off. So um, I'm gonna build on this, but I uh, just wanted to make a little video to introduce it, this project, um, and let people have access to I mean, the wiring, I shouldn't have to make a schematic for this. It's, there's nothing custom about it. It's essentially just connecting other controller or con, uh, modules and boards you can buy off Amazon. I bought the DC motor con, uh, adapter of driver off Amazon. And I had bought these off Amazon. I bought a bunch of them for like 10 bucks. And the Node MCU, of course, you can get those for like uh, five to 10 bucks each. It's a great little platform. And this is just, you know, a little PCB that I used. Uh, really, really, the only thing on here is the diode and the switch uh, button. Um, so I haven't programmed the button to do anything yet. I did during testing, but I've removed that functionality. But I'll probably add it in in a moment here when I get back to the console. But that's all this is. Um, so I'll just, I guess I'll put it back on and, and show it dispensing food. But I don't know how much more I can describe. So this, all this does is set that on. And when you, when it, when it falls, you know that you've gotten into the, the gear, right? Okay, so that's level. And that means it's seated, I think. Yeah, I think it's seated. Um, I'm gonna push it down because I think it likes to move off if it's not. No, it's seated. Well, let's just do a feeding. So let's see how much a four is. <laughs> it looks like it's like feeding one piece of food at a time. So, my little puppies. Funky, come here. Show you my little puppers. So every, this is Monkey. Hi, Monkey. That's her food. She knows the sound. She's just a little frustrated. She hears it and it's not hers yet. She knows that sound in the morning runs over to it to get her food. So what I have is a, a scheduled, that's not your food button, get away. You got your food, you're a good dog. You eat your food regularly. But I have a scheduled task on one of my computer and my server that uh, a Windows scheduled task basically just sends the API call the same thing the web page is doing, um, which triggers it at three times a day in order to feed my pet. Um, and I guess that's really all 
the, the video is worth. Um, so if anyone has questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. The GitHub is going to be in the comment, uh, the description of the video, as well as uh, probably links to some of the components. And uh, yeah, please, people, purchase this if you can afford it. Modify it, and please help me build this out. I, I feel like uh, if someone with some coding knowledge past the basic uh, coding knowledge that I have can get a hold of this and be interested in this, they can do some really cool things. Uh, I just, I'm bad. I'm not a developer. So I really, you know, hobbled along to get this code implemented, but it's got basic functionality, just the kind of basics I wanted to start from. And I guess I'm going to build on top of it now. So, uh, yeah, that, that's all I really wanted to demonstrate was, uh, yeah, this will pet pet feeder modified with a node MC Arduino to do whatever I say. Uh, and thanks for listening.